I am here at the Legacy European Tour where people flew from all over Europe to try to compete to get to finally live their magic dreams and play on the Pro Tour. This place looks like the Mines of Moria, but if I do well enough, maybe I'll play on the feature match. We're playing a bad deck, but we'll see how many of them we can take down with it. We are ready for battle. So later, I will bring a Pioneer deck with cards that date all the way back from 2012. So I will then offer even more money to anyone who can beat me in an even modern to modern mirror match. And finally, we will do something big, and I will bring the best deck from the most powerful, reasonably played format. I don't get to play over here, so my booth is all the way here in the back. This is Rodrigo. He's helping us set up. I am ready. Any time now. So no one's challenging me, so we're gonna have to pull out the big guns. This should work. Oh, finally, we have a challenger. Excellent. This is Jacob. He actually placed first in the tournament we're at right now. But the prize money and fame is not enough. He wants my five euros as well. But if he beats my standard deck, I'll give it to him. I'll play a Warden of the Inner Sky. It's just a one, two, but I can tap three artifacts or creatures to give it a plus one, plus one counter and scry. And if it gets big enough, it even flies. Oh, Jacob plays two creatures. They can also get bigger and can also fly. I can also spend two mana for two creatures, but they just stay one ones. I'll make my Warden a little bigger. It lets me scry. Lava Dark. That'll let him surveil twice. Oh no, his creatures are three threes now. This is gonna hurt. I'll make a clue, but I hope you didn't care about it because I'll turn it into three goblins. I'll make my warden a little bigger. Maybe it'll grow enough to block one of those Dragon Rage's channelers one day. I'll take another six damage. Ouch. I'm playing the deck that is known for playing millions of creatures, but somehow Jacob is keeping pace. Let's do something about that. Case of the Gateway Express will deal damage to his channeler equal to the amount of creatures I have. And if I attack with three or more creatures, I solve a case and it starts giving my creatures plus one plus zero. I'll finally grow my warden enough to be a big scary flyer. I'll give it a little sister. Ooh, Jacob gives himself a flurry of triggers with his expressive iteration. Now his Dragon Rage's Channeler has to attack, so I'll munch on it with my big flying warden. I'll attack him down to four, which somehow solves the case. Oh, he almost had enough in his hand to get me on the swing back. What? I thought I'd spent all day giving away money to people who just swiftly mopped the floor with me. Guess who just beat the person who's first place in the tournament? Really? With a standard deck. Really? I just did it. Okay, let's see if I can go beat more people. This is Nico. Is he gonna walk away five euro richer or am I gonna beat his best modern deck with my pile of standard cards? Oh no, he starts the game with a ley line of the guild pack and play, that's bad news. His lands are all land types and his creatures all colors, which sounds pretty meh until you see what kind of creatures he's playing. While I pay one mana for one one that deals him one damage and makes a blood, Nico will pay one mana for a wild in the cattle, which is a three three because his lands are plain mountain forest. I will tap all my creatures to make a knight errant of Eos, which will allow me to look at the top six cards in my library and put creatures from there into my hand. Nico plays another land, which plays a Scion of Draco, which only costs two mana because his lands are not just plain mountain forests, they are plain mountain swamp island forests, which sounds like a place where you need really good boots for. And Scion costs two less for every basic land type you control. It's a 4-4 flying that, because his creatures are now all colors because of the ley line, they all have Vigilance, Hexproof, Lifeslink, First Strike, Trample. I can't race this thing, it has Vigilistrical proof. And he plays another one. Oh, and he ends it by burning my face off with a tribal flames. I'm Draco Toast. Nico deserves his five euro. So I lost that one. So now it's time to find more people to challenge my standard deck. Hello there, Carl. Ooh, Marco has come to challenge me. Let's see what kind of modern deck he's planning on challenging my standard deck with. Ooh, it's Mill. There's no way I'm losing to Mill with my hyper fast aggro deck. I'll attack, he blocked. Well done, he passed the test. Marco is a worthy opponent. Now his game plan is not to get me to zero life, but to have me put cards from the top of my library into my graveyard until I literally have none left, which in magic makes you lose the game. I'll play out some more friends and tap all of them to cast a Knight Errand of Eos. Let's go looking for some more cards. Oh no, he's gonna mill me again with his crab and counter my Knight Errand. My creatures tapped for nothing. They could be attacking right now. But I actually managed to close out the game. Look, he's only at 11. I'm attacking with all this. Oh, no, oh, no. He'll gain three life for every creature card in my graveyard. 42 life is a lot of life. I lose. I hope Marco enjoys his money. So I've lost two games now. I have won one, but I'll recruit my friend Toralf. He is pretty good at playing magic. Toralf, do you want to play Pioneer with me against some modern decks? Yes, let's go. Who wants? to play modern against a pioneer deck for money. This guy's just hanging out next to the booth. I guess he thinks our pioneer deck is just too small fry for him. Welcome. Thank you. There is no way Wenfrey here will defeat two of us. And now that we are two minds, we will dress. We don't care about your cards. That's not true. We really don't want you to have those. Play a vampire. Just because Soren exists. 
Yes, Soren does exist. Soren and Petra's Bloodlord is a three mana planeswalker which has some abilities, but the one we care about here is if you minus three, you get to put a vampire from your hand onto the battlefield. When we make some constructs. Aha, but he forgot that Soren has another ability. If we plus one him, we get to sacrifice one of our vampires and deal three damage to any target and we gain three life. We'll cast another Soren. And we'll use his second ability to take out the second construct. See, Carl, with two mines and some older cards, we won't be giving away so much money. When we plays another Lotus Bloom, so far his deck is just full of surprises. Now, Vayne Ripper is a 6 5 flying vampire that has a ward cost, which means if ever you want to target it with anything, you need to sacrifice a creature. And whenever any creatures die, my opponent loses two life and I gain two life. Sorry, Winfrey. Two players and the best deck Pioneer has to offer seems to have been enough to beat a modern player. Hi. Nice to meet you. Have a seat. This is Nicolo. Do you think his modern deck can beat two players? I don't. I was wrong. At least we get to give him 20 euros. Yeah, Nicolo stomped us. I suck this. Mm -hmm. I put minus minus uh, one counter on nothing and uh, repeat it uh, as many times as. Good games. Thanks. You have a card market account? Yes. Now you have 20 euros extra on it. Dollar, we're supposed to be winning. We're playing the best deck in Pioneer. I mean, we play against the modern deck, so. <laughs> okay, let's see if we can give more people money. Pioneer. We are not discouraged. We're playing the best deck in Pioneer, and I doubt Alexander will be able to compete even with his modern deck. Oh no, he starts with the ley line of the guild pact. Oh, I'm getting flashbacks of my game with Nico. Remember, now that his lands are all five types, Alexander's creatures have hexproof, vigilance, lifelink, give good back massages, have a driver's license, everything. But we have a vein ripper, and that's way bigger than his silly 4-4. And he's discarding a lightning bolt? Hmm, suspicious. Let's just block with the vein ripper. No, this just dies. To what? This is a 4-4. It's in his graveyard. He just <laughs> he, he <laughs> discarded <laughs> it by mistake. He misclicked on his one card. Oh, yeah, he's like, oh no! Okay, we can't win without attacking, so let's check to see if he actually has that lightning bolt. You misclicked, right? I missed it, yeah. So we blocked. Oh, and you missed blocked? At the first strike? Yeah. Oh, oh shit. I have oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. Well played. Thanks. All right. You this did is a yours. good start. Yeah, Here's 20 euro. Thank you very much. I keep on losing with a pioneer deck, but at least we keep giving people money. Oh. I found the modern oh. deck. We can play. Oh, we're gonna win now. We're gonna start winning. Flavio is hoping to beat us and gain a prize, but little does he know, we are playing modern versus modern. Oh, Thoughtseize? Okay, well, now he knows. Let's give him a taste of his own medicine. Oh, I think we might be playing the same deck. Mono Black Mirror Match? Let's go. We have to win. We each play a few lands and... Flavio plays Karn. This allows him to minus it, get card of his sideboard and put it into his hand. Oh, he'll get a one ring. That's the same card he took out of our hand in turn one. Bye bye, Karn. This playmat is not big enough for two Karns because we'll play our own. We get a liquid metal coating, which comes well with our Karn because we can turn his lands into artifacts and then turn them into creatures with Karn. But since they have no toughness, we can basically blow up one of his lands every turn. Let's start taking down Flavio's lands. Oh, no more land destruction. Flavio takes down our Karn. And he plays his own Karn? This is the Karn Wars. And he also gets a liquid metal coating. Now our lands are in trouble. This is so tense. Achoo, I sneezed so hard a removal spell came out of my nose and destroyed Karn. Now we both have a liquid metal coating. They're just staring at their watches waiting for our Karn to arrive. And unlike Flavio's Karn, ours is on time. We'll get a Phyrexian Metamorph. Oh no, our Karn, it was so young and its life was so full of possibilities. We'll copy his one ring and because we can, we'll use the most expensive one ring copy token possible. Oh no, his Karn is back in black. He gets a cityscape leveler. And a worm coil engine. Consider us cityscape leveled. I was so sure we were going to win. What do we say? We are good and capable modern players. Hello. Step into our office. Randy is stepping up for the challenge. Hopefully he's as good at magic as he is at being menacing. I'll keep this hand. Todd, what are you doing? This hand is terrible. It only has one land. But if we get the lands, this hand is incredible. Okay, well, I hope Randy enjoys his free win and his free money. He plays out a hangerback walker and a pair of welding jars. A lot of edges on this draw. Well, not a lot, lot, but... I can imagine. I can imagine there's a lot of work behind this. Huh? No, no, uh, because we needed the land. Look at that. Oh, oh we're yeah. fine. You don't want to protrude by getting unlucky. We played a few more lands and the Sunning Titan and even turned our ring into a creature to beat him down with it. What a whimsical way to win the game. And then die when you attack. Good <laughs> games. <laughs> okay, now, what do we say? Yes. Let's win. Let's win. A modern game. Yeah. Let's win. Modern. A modern game. Modern. modern. 
We're on the beginning of our hot streak. Yeah, Sadie is an expert amulet player, but we'll start off with a good roll. Our mystery man is still just hiding out in the sidelines. I wonder what he's up to. She'll try to play some creatures, but our deck is all removals and shield reds. We would show you the game, but it was so brutal we could get demonetized. Sadie fought valiantly, but this is not a good matchup for her. She went out on our own terms at least and made herself draw a card into our shield red, bringing her to zero life before we could do it ourselves. Thought this is too easy. Magic is so easy. We need to find two opponents at the same time. Oh, I like your thinking. Can we count? Yeah. One, One two. two. Do you have modern decks? Yes. Okay, follow us. This game is not only important because we're finally two versus two, but also because this man here with the more than average amount of hair is a Carl. So that means it's the Battle of, battle the, of Carls. the Carls. We'll have to be a little bit more synchronized than that if we want to win the Battle of the Carls. So we play out our land in an expedition map. So far, it's looking good for Team Carl Market. Team Carlingers make some bugs. We'll fix some mana and suspend a tutor. Oh no, they will play a Yagnoth. That's one of the most potent combo cards in Mario. It's gonna be hard for us to beat that combo without removing every Yogmoth we see the moment they hit the board. It's okay, I have a plan. Let's play Karn and go to our side board. Oh, that's a great idea. He went to a haystack. What did he find? A Pithing Needle. It allows us to name a card. Yagmoth, obviously. And then all activated abilities of the card become blank for as long as Pithing Needle is in play. We did have to go all in on this because we know that now they can easily take down our Karn. We would like to show how great we are at magic by playing this Haywire Mind. Oh, you are great at magic. They do some pirouettes and then use Haywire Might's ability to take out our needle. Now, Yagmoth is definitely going to be a problem. I really need to win the Battle of the Carls. I don't want to have to change my name to Ronald or whatever the rules here are. It's okay. We have one last pithy needle in our sideboard. And name... Yagmoth. They play an Agatha Soul Cauldron. Luckily, it does nothing thanks to Karn. They take out our Karn. Oh no, I guess it's time to read Agatha's Soul Cauldron. You can exile cards from a graveyard and it gives the activated ability of the card exiled with it to creatures you control that have a plus one, plus one counter on them. They exile a walking ballista from their graveyard, which means that creatures with plus one, plus one counters can now remove one of their plus one, plus one counters to deal one damage to target creature or player. And they play Blood Artist, which will deal one damage every time one of their creature dies. And pay close attention because this is clever. This Strangle Root Geist has Undyne, meaning every time it dies, if it did not have a plus one, plus one counter on it, it comes back into play with a plus one, plus one counter. So if it removes this plus one, plus one counter to shoot itself one damage, it dies, but it comes back into play because it no longer has a plus one, plus one counter. And comes back with a plus one, plus one counter on it because it has Undyne. Meaning that it can destroy itself infinite times. All this while, the Blood Artist is just pinging us for one damage every time the Strangle Root Geist enters the graveyard. Meaning that we are very dead. That was such a Clever way to play around our pithing needle. Whatever you say, Ronald. Okay, well, Carl? Yes. He's the better Carl. <laughs> well played, well played. But I did promise you at the beginning of this video that we would pull out the big guns if ever this happens. And we brought the magic equivalent of an atomic bomb. Because we will be playing the best deck in Legacy, which is a format where you can play all the most broken cards in magic. If anyone manages to beat it with their modern deck, we will give them 50 euro. Our mystery man is still just hiding out in the sidelines. I wonder what he's up to. Ismael is up for the challenge. He plays a phalogy archaeologist, which will allow him to mill three cards. Ooh, that's an attraction. I think that might be a handy tool that will be relevant later. We'll brainstorm. One, two, three, that's excellent. And as we've practiced, we'll entomb our own Atraxa right into our graveyard. That was a solid seven on 10. I'm proud of us. Now let's evoke this grief to take something out of his hand. Let's do our choreography again. Three, two, one, choreos. We are basically ready for the Juilliard. He grieves us as well. And takes our counter spell. But we have a trick up our sleeves. We'll cast an animate dead, which will allow us to bring back a card from our graveyard. Did I say our graveyard? I meant Ismael's graveyard. Let's bring back his Atraxa, which allows us to draw a bunch of cards. It also happens to be a 7-7 Fligilunch. He'll exile it with his Solitude. I see he's a player of free spells as well. This will allow us to gain six life. We'll finally draw our cards from the Atraxa. We'll look at the top 10 and put one of each type into our hand. And just like that, our guest tanks are all fueled up. So let's reanimate his Grizzlebrand. It's so convenient that Ismail just keeps putting such juicy reanimator targets into his graveyard. We'll attack with the Grizzle Daddy. And why not? Let's just reanimate his other Atraxa as well. It's in his graveyard, so technically one player's trash is another one's Atraxa. Let's look at the top 10 cards and take some more cards. I don't think it matters anymore. Oh no, it doesn't. Yeah, we didn't find anything. Let's bring back Solitude as well. We'll swing and that will be good enough. 
Let's wait for another worthy adversary to show up. Okay, let's finally see what this guy's been cooking up all day. Turns out Davide had time to prepare. He saw that we're playing Legacy Reanimator and came with a deck already sideboard and teched out to beat us. I'll allow it. I said people were allowed to challenge us with our modern deck. I never said they're not allowed to do homework before the game. He plays a ruin crap. It will put the top three cards from a library into a graveyard every time he plays a land, which could be good for us or very bad for us. Ooh, he plays a second crab? Davide might actually be able to race us. He just needs to empty out our library and he wins the game and the cash prize. He'll mill us again. Ooh, our library is melting. Now we know that he's already brought cards into his deck against us and mill often plays surgical extraction even in the main board. It's a card that could at instant speed exile a card in our graveyard and all other cards in our deck with the same name. So although this attracts us in our graveyard as an inviting target holding up a big sign that says I draw five cards and hit for seven, let's go for the troll of Chasm Doom in our graveyard because we're okay with that being exiled. Meh, he counted it anyway. He'll mill us again for six. And then he'll mill us for ten? And one, two, three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Our library is basically a slinky. Now we're pretty sure he has a surgical extraction in hand, so let's get rid of his one untapped land and keep up a daze in case he tries to prevent us from going for the Atraxa. Let's animate that our Atraxa. And my clockwork. I would uh, like to... I would like to counter that unless you play one. Days. Now for the cost of returning an island to our hand, we will counter surgical extraction unless Davide pays one man. We get our Atraxa, it draws us a grief. We grief him to take a card out of his hand. But we're still in trouble since Davide can return his Oboro to his hand every turn and mill us for six with his craps. Is this enough to race a Traxa? We start the race. Let's take out that land. We reanimate the troll to make sure Davide has less turns to mill us out. He mills us again for six. We only have two cards in our graveyard. This is so close. So six in the air. We free creatures. Yes. Yeah. Mega Menace. And that'll do it. So now we can go back home confident that we're at least good enough at magic not to lose to modern players with a legacy deck. Except you will have to change your name to Ronald. Ah, why is that other Carl so strong at magic? You mean the better Carl? Maybe I can just be Carl with a K. 